psychology has a word that is probably used more than any other word in psychology. It is the word maladjusted. Maladjusted. I would like to say to you today that there are some things in our society and some things in our world which I'm proud to be maladjusted. I call upon all men of goodwill to be maladjusted to these things until the good societies realize. filmmaker and I suppose the de facto founder of an organization called the Zeitgeist Movement. As far as my background, I was born to what I consider to be a middle class family. My father was, uh, is now a retired postal employee and my mother is a retired child protective services employee. In fact, uh, a lot of my social dispositions on society I think might come from the experiences I had listening to stories coming from my mother. I started getting interested in music, I think, at about eight or nine. I seemed to fall into a love of percussion and drums and rhythm. I was very lucky to be accepted to a school in North Carolina, an art school and a university, which allowed me to grow up in a very different upbringing than I think most people grow up into in a, in a rural town in a, a place in the south such as North Carolina. And I was exposed to a lot of different cultures, a lot of different interests, a lot of things that you wouldn't find in a typical high school, say, in the South. I was exposed to a large variety of people and artistic and creative people specifically, which I think imprinted on me, so to speak, and I continue those trends today. Music and percussion are coupled straight into my identity. became something more than just a film phenomenon that my life would likely change dramatically, which it has. Zeitgeist Addendum was sparked out of people emailing me saying, well, what do we do about all of these cultural problems? What do we do about a corrupt banking system? What do we do about people that are locked into establishment social programs, if you will? I consider the trains of thought and mind to be a program. I consider society itself to be a program that's running. Uh, and the programming locks people into a specific frame of reference. Um, how do we deal with these issues? How do we do? What do we do? And uh, Zeitgeist Addendum was an attempt at answering that question. After Zeitgeist 1 was released, um, it got into the hands of Jacques and Roxanne. And after reading Jacques' book, which they sent me, I realized that this was really important information. I realized that even I was backwards on a lot of issues that uh, needed to be corrected. And in order to get society in line, we have to think about the fundamental problems. This was something that I was attempting to do in part. I had a notion of, but it wasn't until I met Jock Fresco that the lens became focused. It was like all these things that I sort of had an inkling of. Jock's experience, life experience, what he had talked about for song, just focused me in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. So I made a whole section with him in Zeitgeist Addendum. And uh, that's how it took off. A society without a vision of what the future can be is bound to repeat past errors over and over again. This brief video will outline a vision designed to avoid old mistakes. This vision of efficiency, sustainability, and intelligent planning can lead us into a world of unlimited human potential. This vision could be a showcase of what the world can be in our cybernated age. Science and technology could be used for human betterment and the restoration and protection of the environment, serving as an example 
of the intelligent application of the system's approach. While some people advocate the restoration of existing, worn-out cities, these efforts fall short of the potentials of modern technology. Modifying outmoded cities simply delays the inevitable problems. It is actually much easier in the long run to build newer cities from the ground up than to restore and maintain the old ones. A total city system approach requires overall planning to attain a higher standard of living for the occupants. The circular arrangement efficiently permits the most sophisticated use of available resources and construction techniques with a minimum expenditure of energy. The outer perimeter will be part of the recreational area with golf courses, hiking and biking trails and other outdoor activities. Inside this area a waterway surrounds the agricultural belt with indoor and outdoor agriculture. Continuing toward the city center, eight green sectors provide clean, renewable sources of energy using wind, solar, and heat concentrators. The residential district would include unique landscaping, lakes, and winding streams. A wide range of creative and innovative apartment buildings and individual homes will provide many options for the occupants. New and innovative methods of fast mask construction for housing and building systems will inject composite materials into the mold and then extrude the form upward. In some cases, multiple city apartments can be produced as continuous extrusions, which are then separated into individual units. The apartments are lightweight and high strength. All of the dwellings are designed as self-contained residences. The outer surface of these efficient structures serve as photovoltaic generators, converting solar radiation directly into electricity for heating, cooling, and other needs. The thermocouple effect will also be used for generating energy. These individual homes are prefabricated and relatively maintenance-free, fire-resistant, and impervious to weather. With this type of construction, there would be minimal damage from floods, earthquakes, and hurricanes. Their thin shell construction can be mass produced efficiently with little environmental restriction. Adjacent to the residential district are the planning, science, and research centers. The eight domes surrounding the central dome house the art, music, exhibition, entertainment, and conference centers. The central dome houses schools, healthcare, access centers, communications networking, it is also the core for most transportation services, which move people by transveyors horizontally, vertically, and radially anywhere in the city. This minimizes the need for automobile transportation, except for emergency vehicles. Transportation between cities would be by monorail or maglev. Waste recycling and other services are beneath the city. The plan will use the best of clean technology in harmony with the surrounding environment. The central dome also houses the cybernated complex, which serves as the brain and nervous system of the entire city. It might project a 3D virtual image of Earth using satellite communication systems, which provide information on weather, agriculture, transportation, and overall functionality. This cybernated system will use environmental sensors to help maintain a balanced load economy, which avoids overruns and shortages. For example, in the agricultural belt, electronic probes monitor and maintain the water table, soil conditions, nutrients, and more. This method of electronic feedback can be applied to the entire city system. With computers now able to process trillions of bits of information per second, they are vital for arriving at more appropriate decisions for the management of the cities. Colonization of the oceans is one of the last frontiers remaining on Earth. Prodigious ocean city communities will evolve as artificial islands, floating structures, undersea observatories, and more. These large marine structures are designed to explore the relatively untapped riches of the oceans, provide improved mariculture, freshwater production, energy, and mining. They could also provide almost unlimited riches in pharmaceuticals, chemicals, fertilizers, minerals, and other energies. Ocean cities would be resistant to earthquakes and greatly relieve land-based population pressures. 
Unsinkable floating sea domes will provide for those who prefer unique offshore or island living. In the event of inclement weather, they could easily be towed ashore, mounted, and anchored to elevated support structures. Mariculture and sea farming systems are used to cultivate and raise fish and other forms of marine life to help meet nutritional needs. These marine enclosures are designed as non-contaminating integral parts of the ocean system. A sustainable environment can be achieved through the infusion of technology and cybernetics applied with human and environmental concern to secure, protect, and encourage a more humane future. In the final analysis, we are one people and we share one planet. Anyone that chooses to challenge establishment orthodoxy, which traditional worldviews, not to mention the system that we live in, sets themselves up for venomous attacks. I'm well aware of this. If you look back at the history of anyone that has chosen to challenge the establishment, uh, it's a very dark history. There are a great number of people out there that know that something is wrong but they do not understand the source of that wrongness because they are in the box of indoctrination. Socrates. Socrates never speculated on the slavery that was existing during his time. That was normality to him. This goes with every type of political philosopher that's ever existed, whether it's Karl Marx, whether it's Plato, uh, they're all locked into an established paradigm and their thought processes can only go so far. And this includes probably myself. People are locked into a box. They see the box around them. They see the leaks and the holes and the cracks and they go up to the cracks and they try to fix them. They try to patch the holes. But they don't stop to think that maybe there's something wrong with the box itself. Maybe the integrity of the box that they exist in is inherently invalid, it's inherently void. The economic system that we live in is a parasitic paradigm that is only going to lead to self-destruction, but people don't see that. So if you attack the economic system for what it actually is, everyone's feathers go up. Everyone says, well, wait a minute, this is the world we all live. We live in a profit-based, labor-for-income world, cyclical consumption. This is what we're used to. We understand we have division of classes. You know, they throw in human nature. They throw in everything that will try to make it seem like it's a part of the natural order of reality when it, in fact, is not. Um, if I was to summarize the, um, the attacks that typically happen towards myself and the people I work with, the first one would be credentialism. Credentialism is an annotation for the priesthood of those in the know. Now, bear in mind, this is a gradient of relevance. Obviously, I'm not going to go to a doctor, if I can help it, that has absolutely no credentials in the surgery that I might need performed. They require instruction and experience to do so. But when it comes to the other side of the spectrum, when it comes to the simple analysis of information, when it comes to the analysis of history, when it comes to economics, because it is a contrived system, has no basis in anything else in general operation. It's not based on laws of physics. It's not based on any aspect of scientific law that has any relationship to planetary operation. Then suddenly it becomes very relevant to speculate as to what these things actually mean to society. It's a double-edged sword when you get a master's, bachelor's, PhD in a particular medium because think about what you're actually doing. You're going through a curriculum that's been completely established for you by the institutions that have existed prior. When it comes to social things and a great deal of subjective variance, uh, you lose objectivity in that sense because you're literally indoctrinated into the beliefs that are presented. To get a degree in economics, which is probably the most wasteful thing you could possibly do, is to be completely indoctrinated into the idea that what you're studying is actually a science and actually has some type of relevance to anything. So when I get emails from PhDs in economics that try to debunk the aspects that we talk about, it becomes quite clear to me that the reason they have such an objection is really an emotional one. It isn't an objective aspect. They have culminated an identity to themselves because of their belief system. And for me to take that away from them, to debunk their ideas about economics, is to take away their identity. 
it's easy to point out that some of the greatest minds that have contributed some of the most powerful inventions to our world have come from non-establishment institutions, have worked on their own, they've done their own study, they've guided their own direction of information. They didn't just sit in a classroom and take in the road information, do the step-by-step -step processes as oriented by the establishment, and then grab their diploma and degree, and hey, now I'm an expert in a given field. Uh, the most tremendous minds, the most tremendous contributions comes from those, from those that are outside of the box. I don't even need to give examples of that to make that known. So, back to my point, when it comes to social theory, if you will, credentialism, I give zero weight to. Academia is a detriment to advancing social progress. Another form of attack simply comes from the cultural nuance, comes from the social programming, uh, what we call the self-appointed guardians of the status quo. People that are suffering in the system just like anyone else, but their social identification is so powerful, they are so locked into the box, that they find it infuriating to think that what they're living is actually wrong, paradoxically. I get this all the time from people. The self-appointed guardians of the status quo are birthed in religion, birthed in economics, birthed in the illusion of democracy that we see today across the world, birthed in the, the various isms that are entirely pointless, capitalism, communism, fascism, socialism. You have the priesthood of the monetary system, the capitalists, if you will, you can give it that rhetoric. I don't use that word. It's meaningless. The monetarism is the word I use. The pretense for acquisition of money is based on differential advantage, which is based on dishonesty, period. Then you have the priesthood of religious concepts, religious identification, and the idea that somehow we know everything already, and there's a God, he's looking down on us, controlling everything. I won't even go into the paradoxes that come from that extremely narrow notion. So in other words, the biggest crutch to the evolution of human thought is breaking your own indoctrination. It's very, very difficult to overcome emotional elements that have become so ingrained in you that you have an immediate reaction, an immediate suffering and pain when anything interferes with that. It's a very, very complex problem. But I'll say it again, we have to learn how to break, excuse me, we have to learn how to identify and break our own indoctrination if we expect to move forward at all as a civilization. My name was put forward because I wanted to protect my friends and family from the association. People say to me, well, you should have you should come out with everything. If you're going to talk about any of this stuff, then you've got to be prepared to deal with all of this and that that you set up for yourself. I had an email that said that to me, uh, criticizing me for not releasing my last name. And I thought to myself, you know what? What they're actually saying, anyone who actually says that, is actually saying that Martin Luther King deserved to die, or that Gandhi deserved to die for making themselves known. I've gotten many death threats from the religious community. We live in a very fucked up, sick culture. We really do. The society is mentally ill. To be normal is to be messed up in this culture. So, my name, Peter Joseph, you know, at what point does my identity become absolutely transparent? Should I give people my social security number? Should I give them my tax returns? And just to throw it in there, there are plenty of people throughout history that have gone by their first and middle name, excluding the last name from their general communication and walks uh, in their society, just like people often use their, la their middle name and their last name. Let me tell you why you're here. There's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? that you are a slave. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison. A prison for your mind. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told. You have to see it for yourself. I know you're out there. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. 
I didn't come here to tell you how this was going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. And I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. <laughs>